Macros, combined with the Mail Merge functionality in Microsoft Word, can be very effectively used to do data updates in Dynamics GP. Some uses for this could include updating postcodes against debtors or creditors, revaluing fixed assets, and loading new data where you can't use Integration Manager. In this demo, I'll update postcodes against creditors. To do this, we will record a base macro, merge data from an Excel sheet, and save and run the final macro. Our first step is to record the base macro. With the creditor maintenance window open, start the macro recording. Tools, Macro, Record, or Alt F8. Save the macro to a location, giving it a relevant name. To make the macro as efficient as possible, only move to or enter data in the fields you need, in our case, creditor ID and postcode. Enter your creditor ID, click on the postcode field, enter a postcode, and click Save. In the Macro Recording, Tools, Macro, Stop Record, or Alt F8. The next step is to open our recorded macro using Microsoft Word. If you've never looked at the coding side of a macro before, they can look a little confusing. However, with a bit of practice, they become quite simple to understand. Let's look at the components. The first part tells you the version of Dynamics GP. Then we see a line that tells us which window we've opened. We can then see that we typed to the vendor ID field, and then we moved and typed to the zip code field, and then finally moved to and clicked on the Save button. Now we can use Mail Merge to link to the simple Microsoft Excel file containing the data that we need. I found it easiest to use the Mail Merge wizard. Click on the Mailings tab, then the drop down next to Start Mail Merge and choose the Step by Step Mail Merge wizard. The steps will show on the right hand side. Choose Directory for the document type and click Next. Accept the default of current document and click Next. Click the Browse button and choose your Excel file. Re choose the sheet that the data is on, review the details and click OK. We now want to insert the merge fields. Highlight the creditor ID and click on Insert Merge Field and choose Creditor ID field. Repeat for the postcode. Be careful to not delete the apostrophe while you're doing this process. Once complete, click Next to arrange your directory. Click Next once more and once again to complete the merge. Choose to merge to a new document. Select all records and click OK. This file now gets saved as a new macro file ready to be run. Choose File, Save As, change the type to plain text, name your file and include the .mac extension. Save it to your file location. Accept the file conversion message and close the file. Open the location where you saved the file. You'll notice that I have a .txt file extension on the end of what I saved. This is because Word will automatically assign that extension because we saved it as a plain text type. If you can't see this file extension, you may need to go to your Tools menu, to the Folder Options, on the View menu, and ensure that Hide Extensions for Known File Types is not checked. We need to rename this file to remove the .txt extension. A message will come up saying that the file might become unusable. You can just hit Yes on this and it will be fine to use. We're now ready to use this file to run in Dynamics GP to update our postcodes. In Dynamics GP, open the Creditor Maintenance card. 
Remember, we need to be at the point we started recording the macro in order to play the macro. So, with our cursor on creditor ID, go to Tools, Macro, Play, or Control F8, select your macro, and let it run. You can see it's entering the keystrokes as we would be doing it ourselves. Our macro has run for 5 seconds, and if we scroll backwards, we can see that we now have postcodes against the suppliers. Now obviously I only have half a dozen suppliers in this database, but you can see that if you had a hundred suppliers to update, it would certainly speed up the process. So let's summarise. Macros can be used in various places in Dynamics GP to speed up data entry for data updates. The key thing to remember is that it is recording your keystrokes. You need to start and finish in the same place, otherwise your macro will fail when you try to run it. The Word document and Excel files can be saved for further updates. And finally, practice does indeed make perfect. This was quite a simple example, and once you've mastered the basics, you can try your hand at some more complex scenarios.